Alright guys, how's it going? Now I did promise the folks on Discord another visual scripting tutorial. I'll put the link in the description down below. It is an affiliation link, just so everybody's on the same page. But I recommend you check it out. So today I'm going to be covering the boolean variable and the display checkbox and it's dead easy to be honest. So what I've made here is a little icon in the top right and anytime I click it, it will add the display name on and off. And this is great, it just saves me going into the viewport, enabling name. Now I could create a shortcut or I could create a quick favourite menu, but just having it here is just so much easier to be honest. So let me show you how many nodes it actually takes to make something like this. 12, and I could probably do it in 3 less if I'm kind of tidy about it, but 12 will be fine. If you just want to take a screenshot and just jump ahead, you're more than welcome, but I'm going to set this up from the beginning. And it's pretty easy to be honest, and I'll walk you through the stages. So I'm in visual scripting node, I'm going to add in a new node. We'll delete the default stuff, and the first node that I need to drop down is an add to panel node. I'd like to allocate where I would like this add on to go. So we'll look for add to panel. We'll select our location and I'll put it here on the top. So we now have selected the allocation. We now know where it wants to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is add in a display checkbox or a toggle, the best way to describe it. Now I'm using node tab, so I only need to press tab and it brings up the nodes. So what I'll do here is I'll look for a display checkbox. And we'll plug this into the layout. Now one thing about the display checkbox is you can use custom boolean, so you can see here custom. So I'll quickly drop down a boolean variable node and I'll call this switch name. So what I'll do is I'll set the boolean variable to false just to begin with. And the next thing I'll do is I'll actually create an operator because I need to tell Blender, look, you need to do something. So let's create an operator. Let's call the operator first run. And I'm going to pipe this into a set object data. So I'll look for set object data properties. We'll take the execute, we'll plug this in here. And we need to pipe something into the data block so we can get a value. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to look for object context. And I'm going to take the active object and I'll plug this into the data block. Now you can see here we have a whole bunch of variables that we can use. But what I'm essentially looking for is called display name. Now just as a tip, if you ever get stuck, what you can do is like if I hit display name in the viewport, and I jump into scripting, you can see here, it actually gives me what it's doing, so so if you're ever really stuck, have a look in the scripting editor or the console. So we have a display name, I'm going to hit the plus sign. So what I need to do here is, I actually need to toggle the display name on and off. You can see here, this means it's a kind of true and false statement. So I'm actually going to just copy the object context. I'm going to drop down a get object data node. We'll plug this into the active object, and we'll look for display name. And we'll hit the plus sign. Now the next thing I'm going to do, it's actually pretty important, I'm going to use a negate node. What that basically does is it changes one value to another, so if it's a 0 it'll make it 1, if it's 1 it'll make it 0. And the reason I want to do this is, is if you change objects, you end up running into a thing called an OR gate or an AND gate, and you can actually trip yourself up. I only need this to toggle on and off, it doesn't matter what object it is, as long as the value is set at 0, go to 1, and if it's at 1, go to 0, essentially. So we'll drop down a negate node here. We'll take the display name, and we'll plug this into the display name value. So it doesn't matter what it is, it'll automatically change it. And we're just about ready, so if I actually go to the display checkbox, I drop down the switch variable name, which is essentially this. So the next thing I need to do is update the variable. I'm not actually running an operator at this stage, I've just created it and it's called the first run. So what I can do is I can go to run operator. I can plug this into the variable and this essentially means every time the variable updates, it will start to run this program. So this comes in handy and the run operator that I'm looking for is the first run. So I can go to custom, first run. What I'll do here is I'll bring this down and I'll just compile the add-on. And you can see here I now have a toggle. And it'll toggle the name on and off. We can kind of jazz this up a little bit. But what we can actually do is use an if statement regarding the layout options. So if I drop down an if layout, let's plug it into the layout here. What I can do is I can actually take the negate value and I can plug this into the if statement. And that means it'll switch. And the next thing I can do is I can actually just copy this display checkbox. So I'm going to copy and paste this. 
I'm going to plug this into the else statement. I'll leave the toggles on, so when it toggles, it toggles. And I'll just give this an icon and we'll just randomly pick something. We'll just call this off, for example. And we'll compile it. Let's run. And there we go. Let's just quickly tidy this up and give it this an icon as well. We'll call this on. And there we go, we have our very own icon for doing something like displaying a name. Now we can grab pretty much anything when it comes to Blender. So that is pretty much it. Like I says, 12 nodes and you're pretty much done. Do me a favour guys, like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, follow me on Twitter, support me on Gumroad, you know what to do. Take care.